see the planes going over and bombing the city. So at one point we came, there was a bridge, and the bridge was blown up. So half, half of our people were on one side of the bridge, and the other half on the other side. I happened to be on the right side, so they took us in to a forest next to a village. And they took us in that forest, and the guards asked for volunteers to come and take the sick people into the village. And they told, said the volunteers, they, come, they have to come back. So one of the volunteers was a friend of mine. One here, this one here. So on the way back, they found a dead horse in the snow. So they took off, cut off some pieces from the horse, and they came back. And this friend of mine came back and gave me a piece of meat. He said, "Here, here's a piece of meat." So I made a fire with barbecue. That was the best meal I had in a long time. So barbecue, and during the night, the guards disappeared. So the next morning, the German police came and took us all into that village, and they disappeared. So we just walked around, it was about around 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, they took us in. And at one o'clock, I saw American tank moved in, came in, and believe me or not, that's the only, and I was liberated, that's the only thing I saw, the one tank. Because when they came in, they, made, they closed up the village. They didn't want anybody to get out. But we were a group like uh, old timers. We were four or five years in the camps already. We broke through and started to walk to see where where the next city. So we walked for a short short distance, not too far actually, and there was a German bakery. So we went into the bakery, everybody got a bread, and then we start walking again to see where where the next town is. So we came into the next town and there were three American soldiers were walking, and they were so drunk they couldn't walk. They were holding on to each other, three of them. But they were, <coughs> excuse me, they were Czechoslovakian, the Czechos Czech descent, and they saw us come, I guess, the clothes we were wearing, they were recognized, and they said, they said, are you Polish? We said, yes. So I said, come on, and they took us to an underground bunker. It was a, a warehouse. You couldn't see the end of it. I don't know, whatever, every, probably everything you can think of was probably in that warehouse. So the first thing we changed, put on fresh clothes. Everybody got a, 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 a backpack and put some food in. And there was a row of bicycles chained up with a chain. They broke the chain and everybody took a bicycle. And we couldn't get out of the street, it was curfew. It was after six o'clock, it was curfew, we couldn't get out. We had to find a place where we were gonna stay. So we hopped over the fence. After three or four fences, finally we lined up where it was a kitchen. There was a German inn. We were taken over by the American troops. They had a kitchen there. In the back was an empty house. So we took over the house. So we stayed in the house there uh, for about uh, 10 days. 
and the rest of the people, I say the only tank I saw was the first tank, because I, they took the rest of the people into the same city, and they put them in, was an Air Force base. They made a DP camp, a displaced person camp. So about 10 days, they came out with a report that anybody who lives outside of the camp has to move into the camp. So we moved into the camp and we were taken back to Munich. Munich is the capital of Bavaria, which is a, a Dachau was 40 kilometers from Munich. Taken there to also to Air Base, where also a DP camp, but you were actually you were free. You you could stay at the camp if you wanted, or you can go any place you want to go. So, uh, so a few of us decided we'd go back where we were the last camp to Landsberg, which it was also a one of the biggest DP camps in Germany. So we went to the camp and we registered in the camp because we were going from camp to camp there afterwards to register because to see if any of your family survived, anybody survived, they used to register. So to find out. So I registered, stayed overnight, and didn't want to live in the camp anymore, so I gave my room away to a friend of mine, and I moved out to a farm. I lived in the farmhouse. I lived upstairs, and downstairs were the cows. So we lived, matter of fact, this, this picture is taken right downstairs where I lived in the farm, the farmhouse. So this picture here, that's, that's Steve, that's what he, this went out. That's his, that was his father, was right here. You're in the middle, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the middle here. Yeah. <laughs> so, I lived in the farmhouse uh, for a little over a month. And uh, I decided to go back home to Poland to see, find out if anybody else came back and survived. So, came back. So our survivors were living in my house, but they told me nobody from my immediate family, except his only survivor was his father, but he lived in a different town. And at that time, it was very bad in Poland for survivors who came back, because the Polish people were killing a lot of survivors that came back because they came back to take back the properties. So they were killing a lot of them. So you were afraid, so I said, I'm going back to get his father and going back to Germany. So on the way, on the train, I found, I found a, 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 met a woman survivor also. And she was going, we were going to the same city where his father was. And she said, I told her I'm going to get him and I'm going back to Germany. So she begged me, she said, please wait two weeks. She was married and her husband had a cap shop. He was a cap maker. And he says, wait two weeks to liquidate, we want to go with you. Because I came from Germany, I had some papers, I'll show you. So, all right, I waited, so I waited the two weeks. And then after two weeks, well, we're getting ready to go back. So we came to the border between, uh, we had to go through Czechoslovakia. The border of Czechoslovakia and Poland. So they said, you have to go to Krakow, that's a poem, town poem, where to get a 
visa to go through Czechoslovakia. So to go through, so I had to go get some pictures. And I went to Krakow, and I got a visa to go through Czechoslovakia. So they were going, there was the woman, her husband, and my cousin, his father. They were my brothers, she was my sister, and they were my brothers. When, uh, so I went on the train at the border between Czechoslovakia and Germany, and, Ger and Czechoslovakia was occupied by the Russian at that time. So I came to the border and I showed him that visa. Well, he said you have to go back, you have to go back to, to Prague, wow. which is the capital of Czechoslovakia, and to get a stamp. So where you go to get a stamp? Two, but two months after the war, there was, there was no government in, in, in Czechoslovakia. Where do you get a stamp? So we said we'll try to go, instead of Germany, go through Austria. So we went to the Austrian border, so they took everybody off the train, and took away all the papers, everything, whatever you had. And they put us up there for about two days, and they were getting together representatives from all the European countries, neighboring countries. So then you have to go through, go in, and they ask you, they ask you where, what your country of birth, where you were born. So they will send you back to the country wherever you were born. So the woman came, the mine one again, she was my sister. So she went in first and asked her where. She didn't know. No, she said, Poland. So he put it on the list to go to Poland. And he had a sign of little paper. Then I went in. And he asked me, the city I was born is made Kova, K-O-W-A-L. He asked me, where are you born? I said, Cologne, Germany. But here it says Kova. I said, well, it must be a typographical error or something. What language do you speak? I said, German. I picked up, I picked up a little Polish, a little Hungarian, Greek in the camps a little. But I speak German. And a I then he says, well, your sister was here, and she signed the paper to go back to Poland. She said she didn't understand. She speaks German. She didn't understand what, what you were asking her. So then I had on one of my papers, I had a stamp from a Polish Red Cross. I don't, I don't even remember how I got it anyway. <laughs> so I showed it to him. I said, here, you see? There's a stamp from the Polish Red Cross telling me I'm going home. So he showed it to the Polish representative. He said, yeah, that's right. So when I was talking to him, his father was standing behind me. I was sitting on the chair behind me. So I kept pushing. I was afraid he's going to ask him something. I was pushing. and said, get out, get out. I was afraid because he had all the pictures in front of him. So he got out, and then this year, so, so I said, well, my brothers don't have to come in anymore. So they took that piece of paper, she signed it, threw it away, and put us on the list to go to Germany. We were 78 people, so 22 were going to Germany. The rest, I don't know where they went, where they sent it. So the next morning, they took us on the, the Russian guards to the, who were just right close by the Austrian border. So they took us to the border to hand us over to the Austrian border guard to make sure we get on a train to go to Vienna. So we came to Vienna, and uh, Vienna was uh, divided in four parts. That time, po uh, German, uh, German. Uh, Russian, uh, American, and French. 
in uh, British. So we had to get to the American side. We got to the American side anyway. We got to the American side and rented a truck and went back to Germany. So, so there, that's where it was. So, do you have any questions? Yes. Um, how old were you when you first put into the camps? Sixteen. Yeah. How did you deal with the traumatic events that were happening? How did I? Um, like, how did you cope with the traumatic events that were happening? Well, how I cope, I had to go the best I could. Yeah, it is, it is a survive. I was gonna ask you, hopefully we'll be real careful, but I wanted to see that picture of you when you were younger. When I was younger? The picture you had. Of you and your friend? Can we pass it around? No, picture, actually, the pictures, see here's, show you a picture where I, where I look, how I look when I survive. Can I pass this one around? Yeah. Oh. That was one of them. So this is Joe in the middle, and then this is his friend who had, is it still horse meat, I think? Oh, yeah. yeah, and this is his cousin, yeah. his and father. This is I, don't know father. If you, you, I don't know if you saw it downstairs. We didn't go in that room because there was an event room, down yeah. there. The, these artifacts, the actual um, originals, are in a case downstairs in the galleries because we have an exhibit on Dachau, and these were the certificates that this Jewish ex-prisoner of the Dachau concentration camp was released. So it's, you can pass that around, actually. I see you. Yeah, I can pass it. Yeah, you can pass these around. You know, this is the liberation. That's what the Dachau liberation. Yeah. So these are the certificates given to prisoners after they were right. liberated from camps. Uh, can you pass it to me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What was it like after when you were living there, after you were liberated? It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. You were, you were in a strange country. Right. You have no family. You're all by yourself. So uh, try to make a life for yourself. Which you did. Which we did. As the general say, him and I was with his father, we were together. They all actually all kept on talking, we were brothers, because we had the same last name. And everybody, we were very close. We kept close yeah. all the time. Until, until the end, his father passed away about, about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Yeah. Um, so you said that. Um, the bridge you guys were on had, you guys had gotten separated because it got blown up. Um, how many of the survivors were with you on that side? So in the bridge, when you were separated by the bridge, yeah. how many? I don't know. If the, I don't know if any or some of us, I guess some of them were. I don't know. I don't know because we, we were separated. So we were half on this side. They, they were taken, the other half were taken to another place. And we were taken to another place. And how many of there were you when you were on the one place? How, how many? many? Yeah, how oh, many prisoners? How many prisoners? It's been about three, four thousand. Wow. wow. So they all, as the liberating forces came closer and closer to the concentration camps, they sent people on these death marches, so they walked them by foot. And that's why there were so many people with Joseph when they were going on these walks. Yeah. What was um, one of the most stressful times? Like, what was the highest? point that was the most stressful for you? Well, the most stressful, actually, the most stressful thing for me is, was when I was in the Warsaw Ghetto, not, not just in the time living together, when I came back from Auschwitz to clean up, and I saw a one of the people try to escape and he was cut. And on a Sunday, we have to watch him being hung. And he had a brother. And when they hung his brother, he fainted. I think that was the most distressful for me. Matter of fact, two years ago, <clears throat> Excuse me. Two years ago, I was invited by the German government to come back to Germany, to Dachau, to celebrate 70 years liberation of Dachau. And they paid all the expenses for us. So I went back, and then by coincidence, you know, uh, I... Do you know who Angela Merkel is? Yes, she's the Prime Minister of Germany. She's the Prime Minister of Germany, so like yes. the equivalent of our president. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know if it's too much. It's happened, but uh, like when you go back to when you came to America, did you ever like uh, like uh, like I would say like have had children or like to get you married? This is my I'm, daughter. I'm living proof. <laughs> I'm his daughter. <laughs> and I have a son. And my cousin is his and father's is his child. Father. So people still went on and, and did get married I'm and his have daughter. children and afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So these are some photos of Joseph meeting Angela Merkel, who's the Prime Minister, or, yeah, Prime Minister of Germany. And um, she... Um, and the German government are very upfront about what happened during the Holocaust, and they accept that this was a thing that occurred, and they honored Joseph at the liberation of Dachau, the anniversary of the liberation of Dachau. So you can just see this is him speaking. <coughs> You've already seen that. Oh, yeah. That's actually, those pictures were actually taken from a video that my father's girlfriend took that I was able to pause it and print yeah. those pictures for him. Because yeah, yeah. it was so she monumental. Yeah. They have some questions, too. <laughs> Yeah. <coughs> Do you want to ask? Um, 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 so, after um, all of this happened, did you hold any grudges? Well, you know, you can never forget what happened. 
You may carry some grudges, grudges, but you can't live with grudges. You have to look ahead, look forward. Today, especially the people, the German people today, the young people, are completely different mm -hmm. what the older people were. Mm -hmm. We were there two years ago. They couldn't do enough for us. Anything, when they go, anything. We were there four days complete. Dinners, occasions, different affairs, different speeches. Diff we even, they took us, we were in a, they supplied us with an Air Force bus. Well, the children, the, the young adults you met at the school that took you out. And yeah. And uh, so, uh, Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you have a question. Too, yeah. Right? Oh, I was gonna ask anyone that you knew or happened to meet. Do you, or sorry, are there any survivors that you knew throughout this whole experience? Oh yeah. Yeah. That you yeah, still. Yeah. yeah that you made it oh yeah. 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 Did Matter of fact, there's survivors. I have a picture here of a couple. Mm -hmm. They met in the camp. There were several survivors. Oh, who mm -hmm. met in the camp, and Are you looking for that mask, Omar? The yeah. first time you did, um, like, this, I don't know if it's a speech, but like, hmm. talk. Yeah, talk. Talk. was it hard for you to express yourself and just like go back to that spot in your mind, just thinking about all this? No, it's a. It, it's not, it's hard, it's, uh, but you see, I think there's somebody upstairs, the man upstairs, I think, wanted me to survive. Oh, to tell this. <clears throat> for the only one for my family. Mm -hmm. uh, but I could tell people like you what happened. See, as children, anyway, here I want to look for a picture I had here. As mind. children, we watched the stories because he wanted us to know and understand, being that we were his children. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I remember being pulled in front of TV sets when I was young, saying, "You sit and watch this." We actually so. say about people I know. There's a couple who just passed away a year ago. Yeah. And we yeah. were. They met in the camp. And we kept touch all the years being here until less, until they passed away last year. Mm -hmm. Is another question up there? Yes. Did you ever have like any feelings of guilt for being like the only one from your family that survived? Mm -hmm. Did I survivor's, survivor's guilt. guilt. Did you ever have any guilt? That you were the only one. A uh, survivor's gave. guilt. I don't know if I have survivor's guilt. I always ask the question, why was I the one chosen? Because from your story, there's a lot I of I always ask the question. Split decisions. I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, through the years, he has tried with the Red Cross to find out I don't know. what happened Never to know. his family and where they perished and all, because there aren't a lot of records, mm -hmm. and they're starting to release more and more records. But he still hasn't been able to find out any details no, yet. I don't know what happened. Where? Do you have any jokes? Okay. Tell the story about your brother when he went to Israel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what, uh, <coughs> what he was saying is we tried, before the war, it belonged to an organization, a Zionist organization, and everything was to strive to go to Israel. <coughs> I had a brother, <coughs> excuse me, I had an older brother, who, he was in a kibbutz, in Poland for six months to get a certificate to go to Israel. When he finished his six months, uh, they had the British had a minister called the Balfour who gave out the quotas. Who he had he gave the quotas how many people can enter Israel. So my brothers ended the six months, they cut the quote in half. So he had to wait his turn to get the visa, the war broke out. 
So he never got to go. Instead, he went to the Warsaw Ghetto, and I don't know what happened to him. Yes? Cody, you make it louder. Louder, sorry. Yeah. When you went to Germany a few years ago, did you feel anger or forgiveness? Did you feel did you feel some forgiveness from them? When you did you feel when some you forgiveness there. when you were there? Did when you, I was there. Uh huh. Well. Find some peace or um. Yes, no, yes, I guess, I see. Because actually, this time, that was the third time I was back. Right. But this time when they did so much to try and make it better. To yes. To no, I could see the, the difference uh -huh. between the people, because we met some people which were, we were very close with them this time when we came back, and they told us stories. There was one, two women, actually, in particular, that they don't even talk to their, to their family because they were asking questions what happened. And they didn't want to tell them. No. Well. Maybe we have time, we have one last question. Yeah. Sorry, um, um, that's great. You, it's, you never get over, or you might, but you never get over deaths that happen around you. But over time, do you just get used to them? Like, well, some well, like, yeah. But during the war, did it feel like you became desensitized to the death around you, or do you feel like every time it was still very hard to see? No. No, I. I just took it the way it came, you know. I just had to continue. Yeah. Onward. Thank you so much. take a break for lunch. Um, before we go down, can I take a photo of you with Joseph? Is that okay with everyone? Okay.